based on the register, Windows Vista is now officially dead. And good riddance. Farewell, Windows Vista, we hardly knew you. But as of now star you're out of support, and even more unloved than was previously the case. Vista appeared in January 2007 and quickly irked users with a feature called User Account Control that produced constant queries about whether they wanted to do something. Microsoft added that annoyance because Windows XP suffered all manner of security woes. Vista made a lot of security improvements under the hood, but also put security in users' faces by constantly reminding them that their actions had consequences. Learning how to turn off UAC became an important step in any Vista implementation. Vista was also slow, its vaunted arrow interface made it slower than Windows XP, which is not what an upgrade is supposed to do. It later emerged that Microsoft may have known that arrow was a resource hog, as it found itself in a fight with Intel over a plan to label some low-spec PCs Vista capable even though they may have struggled to run the OS. It did then help that a service pack planned to fix things up emerged months later than planned, leading then Microsoft CEO Steve Palmer to say the OS was a work in progress rather than the finished item. That he said that 13 months after launch indicates the heat Microsoft was getting at the time over the OS non-performance. Stat Counter offers data on OS usage since 2009 as measured by prevalence of us detected during web browsing sessions. As its graph below shows, Vista's light green line never topped Windows XP's market share was quickly overtaken by its successor Windows 7. As the chart shows, Vista's bumped along the bottom with about 1% market share for years now. Which may be why Microsoft hasn't even offered the extended paid support offering it developed for Windows XP to sneak out secret fixes to those willing to write substantial checks. Windows Vista users have no such safety net as of now they're bait for hackers hoarding zero days and utterly out of fashion. And time. Star at the time of publication there were a few hours left of April 11th in Hawaii and some other Pacific Islands. Good luck getting support out there, folks. Based on ARS Technica UK, Windows Vista finally reaches the end of its unhappy life. This week marks the mainstream release of the Windows 10 Creators Update and the last public patches ever for Windows Vista. Released to manufacturing on November 8, 2006, and shipping to consumers on January 30, 2007, Windows Vista had the troubled development and a troubled life once it shipped. But it was an essential Windows release, laying the groundwork for Windows 7 and beyond. For all the criticism that Vista and Microsoft received, the company never really backtracked on the contentious aspects of the release. After a while, those aspects just stopped being contentious. Troubled development Windows Vista was originally meant to be grander in scope and ambition. Microsoft's Longhorn project envisaged a new database-like file system known as WinFS, a radically new development model, and set of APIs based on Net, and a 3D accelerated user interface built using these APIs. But development of Longhorn faltered. Some problems came from Longhorn itself, WinFS never worked right and was eventually abandoned. This in turn wiped out much of the development work that Microsoft had done on things, like the new Explorer and Mail client, which depended on WinFS. Scrap WinFS, and Microsoft had to scrap anything that required WinFS. Even when the code worked, much seemed to be of dubious quality, with instability and memory leaks abundant. Other problems were not with Longhorn, per se but rather with the software that Longhorn was based on, Windows XP. Windows XP was getting ravaged by remotely exploitable security flaws, and Microsoft realized that it had to do something about it. Over a period of years, the company in some ways transformed itself, devising methodologies and development processes to try to ensure that the code it developed was much more secure by default. 
The most immediate product of this change was Windows XP Service Pack 2, it beefed out the built-in firewall, made it harder for ActiveX content to run with an Internet Explorer, and made a multitude of invisible changes to the operating system to fix security holes. For perhaps the first time ever, Microsoft took the approach of doing the right thing from a security perspective, even if it meant making changes to Windows that might jeopardize application compatibility. Service Pack 2 was a large undertaking, drawing resources away from Longhorn development, and making Longhorn's underlying basis Windows XP without Service Pack 2 liability. With the new parts of Longhorn flawed, and the old parts of Longhorn riddled with security issues, Microsoft decided in August 2004 to start over, scrapping most of the work done in the previous three years. For the new development, the code base that would eventually become Windows Server 2003 Service Pack 1 was the underlying basis. Ambitious features such as WINFs were shelved indefinitely, and while many elements of the planned new APIs did ship as parts of NET, the operating system itself was not built on top of them. But Windows Vista did contain one important element from the Longhorn time frame, a brand new display driver stack, using the Windows Display Driver model, WDDM, that enabled 3D acceleration of the Windows desktop. The Aero Glass shell used pixel shader effects computed by the GPU, and the desktop itself was composited on the GPU, too. Each individual window was drawn to its own piece of memory, and the GPU handled overlaying all the different windows to produce the finished desktop. Shaking up something so major, as the entire graphics stack required a lot of work from GPU companies. Early WDDM drivers were perceived to be slow or buggy, comparing unfavorably to their much more mature Windows XP counterparts. It also somewhat increased the system requirements. Windows itself now needed a DirectX 9 class GPU to perform optimally, and while that's trivial today, it represented a major change relative to the requirements of Windows XP. Without such a GPU, Vista could revert to using XP display drivers, which worked fine, but meant losing Aero Glass translucency. Under pressure from hardware OEMs, Microsoft allowed some systems without DirectX 9 GPUs to be branded as Vista capable. While this was technically true and such machines lacked only visual possess rather than anything functional, it nonetheless led to a lawsuit against Microsoft Consumers were unhappy that their Vista-capable systems were unable to use every single feature that Vista brought. From Microsoft's new security focus, we got User Account Control UAC. The feature whereby Windows asks for confirmation before performing certain administrative tasks. Prior to Windows Vista, most Windows software, especially in the consumer sphere, blindly assumed that it was running with full administrator privileges. UAC broke that assumption and accordingly broke software that assumed it had full access to the system. This put Windows Vista in an awkward spot. At launch, it had drivers that were worse than XP, software compatibility that was worse than XP, and hardware requirements that were higher than XP. Windows Vista's reputation was immediately tarnished, and there were calls for Microsoft to abandon it and go back to the superior Windows XP. Progress can be painful but Microsoft didn't. The changes that Vista brought with it were not mere accidents, and the pain was essential. While UAC was slightly toned down in Windows 7 a few situations that required confirmation in Vista no longer needed confirmation. In 7 the core mechanism was retained, and has been kept to this day. It's just much less annoying today, because most software is better behaved, and no longer assumes it has full system access the days of assuming that everyone is an administrator, all the time, are behind us WDDM drivers rapidly matured, matching, and surpassing their Windows XP predecessors, and today every Windows display driver uses WDDM. 
the forward march of technology made Vista's higher hardware requirements non-issue. Windows 7, released in 2009, included every contentious or problematic part of Windows Vista, but its reception was the complete opposite. It was regarded as compatible and stable, with fast, reliable drivers, and modest hardware requirements. But this was only possible because Vista had forced hardware and software developers to do the right thing, in the first place. If Windows 7 had arrived in 2007, its reception would have been every bit as hostile as Vista's was, for precisely the same reasons. While Microsoft could have sidestepped some minor issues it could have restricted Vista-capable branding to systems with suitable GPUs, for example most of what Vista did was not whimsical or accidental but deliberate and essential. Windows Vista won't be mourn the way Windows XP was when it dropped out of support, and the end of support will be much narrower in impact there just aren't that many people using it anymore. In some ways, it's always going to be remembered as a disappointing release because Vista never truly escaped the sky-high expectations that Microsoft set when it first announced Longhorn. Vista wasn't Longhorn, indeed, nothing Microsoft has released has lived up to that grand vision, and nothing ever will. But Vista was necessary release, it blazed a trail that made Windows 7, Windows 8, Windows 8.1, and Windows 10 all possible. It should be remembered not as a mistake, but as an essential, if difficult, evolution. Based on Deccan Chronicle, RIP Windows Vista, Microsoft scraps its disastrous us. Former Microsoft CEO Steve Ballmer launched its Windows Vista operating system back in 2006. Over 10 years down the line, the tech giant has finally decided to scrap off its what many described as the disastrous operating system. The company took to its BLOG to announce this news. Microsoft announced the news in a BLOG, which said, Microsoft has provided support for Windows Vista for the past 10 years, but the time has come for us, along with our hardware and software partners, to invest our resources towards more recent technologies so that we can continue to deliver great new experiences. In other words, while Windows Vista users will still be able to use the system, Microsoft will no longer be issuing security updates, fixes, or support thereby leaving the system vulnerable to attacks. The operating system has a history of bad experiences. When it was initially released, the system was reported to contain a range of bugs, causing many users to remain on XP despite support for the operating system being stopped in 2014. Soon enough, the OS was subsequently replaced by Windows 7. Microsoft has finally decided to end its support for the system, thus leaving it open for attacks. If you continue to use Windows Vista, after support has ended, your computer will still work, but it might become more vulnerable to security risks and viruses, the BLOG further read. Internet Explorer 9 is no longer supported, so if your Windows Vista PC is connected to the Internet and you use Internet Explorer 9 to surf the web, you might be exposing your PC to additional threats. Also, as more software and hardware manufacturers continue to optimize for more recent versions of Windows, you can expect to encounter more apps and devices that do not work with Windows Vista, the BLOG further added. Based on Tech Times, Windows Vista now officially dead as Microsoft focuses on mainstream rollout of Windows 10 Creators Update. So long, Windows Vista. Farewells are in order for Vista, Microsoft's minimally lauded successor to Windows XP, to put it in the least harsh way possible. It's no secret that the operating system released in early 2007 received mountainous flack for a number of things with critics going as far as calling it one of the worst versions of Windows of all time, down there with Windows Me, and, to an extent, Windows 8. With the Windows 10 Creators update now rolling out mainstream, so will the last public patches for Vista, Microsoft announced. As of Tuesday, 
April 11th, those who are still running Vista will no longer get security updates, non-security hotfixes, free or paid assisted support options, or online technical content updates. The move, according to Microsoft, will help the company pivot its resources in the direction of more recent technologies so that it's able to deliver great new experiences. What happens now if I'm still running Vista on my computer? For those still running Vista, your computer will still be functional, but they'll be less immune and more vulnerable to security risks and viruses, according to Microsoft. For instance, those using Internet Explorer 9 on their Vista machines might be more prone to exposing their systems to potential threats, as that version of Internet Explorer is no longer receiving support. Cutting off Vista completely also entails the eventual lack of third-party support, especially with more developers creating and building apps meant to run on more recent versions of Windows. Hence, Vista users can expect that many apps may soon be incompatible with their OS. The troubles and trying times of Vista Microsoft originally envisioned Vista as a more ambitious undertaking than what it ended up being. Its Longhorn project entailed a new database system called WINVS, a drastically new development model, and set of APIs centered on Net, complete with a 3D user interface built using these APIs. But its development waned. WINVS never functioned properly and was therefore abandoned completely. This made much of the development on certain fronts such as the new Explorer and the mail client defunct because they depended on Windows. At times the code did work but not without its numerous share of memory leaks and instability. It's an incredibly long story, and one that deserves discussion for another day. But to shorten it, Vista contained an important element, a new display driver's pack that enabled 3D acceleration of the Windows desktop. It involved pixel shader effects that was taxing for the GPU, albeit delivering some polish to the UI. But the fact that the whole desktop itself was on top of the GPU was damning. It required GPU companies to work hard on their cards. But even so, under pressure from Intel, Microsoft haphazardly allowed systems without DirectX 9 GPUs to be branded as Vista capable, which made for slow, buggy systems. While it's technically true that relatively underpowered laptops were capable of running the OS, users were frustrated that they couldn't use every feature Vista offered. It led to a lawsuit. But it's all a matter of perspective. Without the vehement upswell of Vista criticisms, Microsoft would and have been pressured to step its game and unscrew its screw-ups. Vista's many debacles led to Windows 7, then to Windows 8, then eventually Windows 10, the latest version of which, dubbed the Creator's Update, recently rolled out to everyone. Thoughts or memories about Windows Vista? Feel free to share them down at the comments section.